Dearly beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, pray the Lord and welcome. We thank God for every opportunity in our life. And it has been on and on and on. And we thank God that you and I are still alive, still praising the Lord, serving him while we're still in the land of the living. We have been looking at several personalities, which we shall continue doing because these men and women in the Bible teach us greatly. And now we get another one. Uh, one of the judges, though, this man wears several coats and is known because of what he did, the several roles that he played in the lives of the people of Israel. And this man is called Samuel. Samuel is known to be one of the judges, actually closing the chapter of the judges. He is a prophet, and the Bible talks about him as people knew him as a prophet of God. And the other thing is that he was a priest because he performed roles of a priest. And so he was a priest, prophet, judge. And because he is the one that anointed the first king of Israel, he's also known to be a kingmaker. And so we talk about Samuel. And I have been mentioning it, and I say it again, we pick lessons. As a person, I do pick lessons from these men and women in the Bible. And so that during our time, we also try, if there is anything to correct, we correct it. And so that God's name be praised. And so Samuel comes at a time when there was a priest who is also known to be a judge. And this man was called Eli, who had children, but they became corrupt along the way. They misappropriated their blessedness. And so they did wrong things when Eli was an old man. And he comes from a family. Samuel comes from a family of polygamy. But we shall not dive into that, but we shall look at his name. As he comes onto the scene, it is his mother called Hannah, and she keeps going to the synagogue, I mean, to the place of worship and pleading with God and asking God to give him, to give her a son. And so we read majorly First Samuel chapter 1. You'll get the whole story about this man. They're talking about Samuel, how Hannah prayed, and how Eli also had his input which at one moment helpful, but another moment maybe uh, not doing good news to Hannah. But at the end, Hannah's prayer was answered. The reason why when she produces the son, the name that is given to him is Shemuel or Samuel. And Samuel looking for its meaning is God has heard. Or rather, in some other versions, they talk about the name of God. And so this name, Samuel, Samuel comes because of the circumstances under which he came, under which he was produced. We have talked about other biblical figures, and I have said it before I say it again, and like many of us actually know that these Hebrew names have their own meanings depending on the circumstances of birth and other things that happened around them. Like Moses, remember, and Joshua and others, those names have meanings. And so Samuel is God has heard. And indeed, God hears prayer. And so this is one thing that I keep learning from this, that actually God hears prayer, that God heard this woman, Hannah. When we read chapter 1 and 2, she even comes and, you know, she exalts the Lord. And, you know, she sings a song because God has heard her prayer. And so Samuel comes as a result of prayer. And Samuel is a product of prayer. And from the Bible, we see several other figures, several other people that are products of prayer. Of course, we talk about from the time of Genesis, the people that, you know, the children that came as a result of trusting God. Samuel is as a result of trusting God prayerfully, earnestly praying, and then diving into the New Testament times, 
How about the birth of John the Baptist? How about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself? And so these are products of prayer. And now, and trusting God. How about in the Old Testament, we talked about Samson. Samson also came as a result of trusting God. The family members were barren. Manoah was, and his wife were childless. And so, friends, from the very beginning of this is that, as we talk about Samuel, we talk about how God, the fruitfulness of trusting God in prayer, trusting him fully. And even in our, in our times, we have lived, we have walked, we have had breakthroughs because we trust God, because God hears prayer. And so Samuel is the man who came, you know, who surfaced as a result of trust by the mother. Mother Hannah prayed and trusted God. And so he comes onto the stage during the time still of confusion in the Israel and the priest that was there in his old age, well, he had served God, but his children misappropriated their positions. And God hears the prayer of this woman and Samuel comes and a son of a promise. She said, I will dedicate this boy into the temple, into the worship of the Lord all his life. And he comes. And one thing that actually that we need to take note of is he comes at a time when visions were rare in Israel because of the circumstances that were prevailing at that time. And so he comes and he became the judge. And uh, the Bible talks about him in um, Judges chapter 3, verses 19 following. Let me just read a few verses here. And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. In verse 20, chapter 3, verse 20, And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. This speaks to me intimately, that all Israel knew that the Lord had made Samuel a prophet. And that the Lord had established him as the prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The vision that had been rare, that had been rare during the time, actually that entire time, God begins revealing himself again because of Samuel, the young man. And what amazes me is actually people knowing that the Lord was with him. And so we pray that actually in our ministry, in our work, that people will see the things that we do, people will see the things that we say, and then may they tell that actually the Lord is, um, is with us. So Samuel grows up and becomes the judge in Israel. He was one of those charismatic leaders of Israel that led the people into war and showing the people their way back to God. He delivered them. And uh, in chapter 7, he does exactly that in chapter 7, verse 6 following. And so that they gathered at Mizipa and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the people of Israel at Mizipa. You see, he's, um, the, the, the Philistines were, you know, were coming and they. Uh, uh, were fighting against them and many, many things are happening, troubles everywhere, but they depended on prayer, they depended on fasting and trusting God. And so Samuel did that work of judgeship, leading the people uh, charismatically, leading them, helping them to see the greatness of the Lord. And so this is something that actually we pick as religious leaders of today. And when you mention leader, religious leaders or church leaders of today, that may God, who revealed himself during the times of Samuel, reveal himself during our times, that as we serve God and as we serve the people, that the people will know that actually the Lord is right on our side, that the Lord has established us, not imposing, not, you know, forcefully wanting to get in, but may people see, may 
may God's hand be revealed in our relationships with other people and may, may it be straight like it was for Samuel that he was known to be the judge, to be the man that God had chosen to lead Israel at that time. And even when this happened in this way, during his reign, Samuel, when he grew old again also, like Eli had been, his sons also became corrupt. And because of what they had done, the people now demanded for a king. And so sometimes, because of the actions that we exhibit, people rebel against us and they will demand for something else. And so in chapter 8, we read that when Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of the firstborn, they mentioned Joel, and the name of the second, Abijah, and they, they were judges in Beersheba. And in verse 3, yet his sons did not walk in the ways of, his, of, the, of, his, of their father, but turned aside after him again. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then the leaders, the elders of Israel, gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are now old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the other nations. So they demanded for the king because of what the sons had done. Friends, I take a challenge from this. That sometimes, I mean, our families disintegrate. Our children, sometimes um, many of them actually do their own things. But this is a lesson that actually we need to ask God to bless us with our children. Like previously we mentioned about the minor prophets and the men that, you know, Ibzan and uh, Jaya, we were told that actually they had sons and they were administering together with their father. Even the grandchildren, even the grandsons. And so in those, in those episodes, we discovered that actually moving along with your children is something that blesses the Lord and blesses the people. And so Samuel remained upright. In his old age, the sons become corrupt and perverted justice. And so we pray that actually God enables us. And this is something negative, something negative that we can learn something from. You and I, who administer our homes, who administer our families, that even during our old age, that we, that our sons will be in one accord with us. And also appealing to the sons and daughters that not waiting for our parents to get old and then we, we pervert justice, we misappropriate what good name that they have worked for. It's a challenge and I appeal to us to take this as a very, very serious lesson that actually somewhere in his old age and even Ella in his old age, sons turning against God and doing whatever they did that was displeasing to him and people leading the people to demand for the king and yet God himself was the king. And so friends, this is serious to me and comparing this great man, Samuel, who rejuvenated visions at Shiloh because of his birth and because he came, he became a leader. God's visions became evident at Shiloh. But during his old age, things were not right. I've just gotten, you know, reminded very heavily about those minor judges that I've mentioned about, Jaya and Abdon, and, you know, uh, they had their children, and their children were moving along with them. So we pray for our children, we pray for families, and during these sessions, I am actually, it's my prayer, that parents and our children, in the service of the Lord, we shall move together. And so Samuel, uh, because of the actions of his children, the children of Israel demanded for the king. And so we pray that the Lord uh, will enable us to be full-time ministers in the service of the Lord, like Samuel was, and um, he was brought and served fully by his mother uh, when he was brought in by his mother. And we read chapters 1, 2, 3. Please, uh, you'll go on and read that. And so this is very, very important. And Samuel asked of God, the name of God. And so there are some important lessons that I want to ask to remember, to pray together that God will speak to us through the life of these great men and women in the Bible. And um, given that Samuel judged all Israel all his life, and he really judged Israel all his life until old age. I'm also praying that actually when people enter service, church ministry, no deviation that we serve 
fully until God says you are now expired. And I pray that actually God uses you because Samuel judged Israel all his life. Samuel served God all his life. It's an important lesson that I pick from here, actually. And in chapter 7, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 15 is what we read here. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went on a circuit year by year. He moved around the circuit, moved around Israel year by year to Bethel, to Gilgal, and Mizipa. These were the, the, the sanctuaries, the places where he went and sat and judged the people. And he judged Israel in all these places. It is an admiration of the life of Samuel that when you start ministry, you don't deviate. You remain in there. You serve God there. And that God's name will be praised. Then he would return to Ramah of, for his home was there. And there also he judged Israel. And he built there an altar to the Lord. He returned home. One other important lesson is, now this addressing church ministers, that many times we serve God and we stay over there and we forget that we need to have a home. Samuel had a home. Pray the Lord. And this is a message. Well, not only church ministers, we have people that have gone into cities. They have, you know, they have built, I mean, they have bought powerful cars. They have bigger jobs, but they don't have a home. They have not built a home in the village somewhere. And so Samuel here is appealing to everyone that he would return to Ramah for his home was there. And so this is an appeal. It's a huge lesson that Samuel lives with us, really, that as we serve God, or oh, you are serving in whichever capacity, we have seen, we have had people that have served nicely, great men in the nation, great men and women in the church and wherever. But when time comes of their expiry, when the time has come for retirement, they have nowhere to go. Samuel teaches us a lesson that we need to use whatever little resources and that God has put at our disposal. Not being corrupt, not perverting justice, not stealing, but at least doing something to have a home for you and for your children. And so this is, for me, is one of the lessons that I pick from Samuel when we read verse 17 of chapter 7 of Samuel, that he will return home. May you have a home where your children call home, where your grandchildren will call home. And we pray that the Lord will open a way for you and for me that actually this is important. Now, one other lesson that actually we learn from the time at the beginning. Now, we have people that have, are struggling to have children, you know, childlessness, barrenness. Now, Hannah was, and it teaches us a lesson that God's timing is the best. And I kept saying this, if God is will that you should have a child, you'll have a child and a child of impact. And so God has a plan for each one of us. God had a plan for Hannah and God had a plan for the boy that was coming, Samuel, and at the right, at the right time. Only even when she faced difficult times with her co-wife Penina, Penina, but she remained strong. She remained believing. She remained trusting. And I pray that actually you also remain trusting and remain believing for whatever it is. It may not be a child. It might be something else that I've been praying for for a long time. Is it a job? Is it education? Is it whatever it is that God's timing is the best? And so Hannah gives us a lesson here, very, very important for you and very, very important also for me that I can pick something here. Now, one other thing that actually that I learned from this is that actually ministry into which we are called is a calling, is a calling and should be a calling and not just a profession. Samuel became judge, but right from his childhood, it had been designated that he would be a prophet, a judge, a priest, a kingmaker. 
And so this Samuel's life talks to me as a church leader. It, the call came direct from God. And may God is calling your life come direct from him. Eli's sons entered the ministry because of lineage. Their father was a priest and though so they became, but there was a mess. And even Samuel's sons themselves as well. They were becoming judges over Israel because of lineage and therefore wickedness, wickedness expanded and it wasn't God's call at all. So friends, a parent may do well because actually God purposed and it was, and sometimes it may be backfire if it is not God's will for, him to be, for you to become maybe that person. But we say that actually may God's call be evident in our lives as we serve him. And Samuel was from childhood. And so may it be evident that actually it's God's call and that it's a, it's a calling but not a profession uh, and which may cause trouble later on. So when God calls, he equips. This is very important. When God calls, he equips. And uh, we need only to learn the art of listening. Samuel was a listener, hearing the voice of God in chapter 3. And Eli told him, go. And when God calls, listen properly and say, here I am. Your servant is listening. These days, there's a lot of noise. A lot of noises coming from every corner. Listening is limited. Calmness, quietness is limited, but we are encouraged in the midst of the noises that are, we are called upon to be good listeners. Having time to listen to the voice of God. Have time to listen to the voice of God. May I have time to listen to the voice of God. And so that actually, at the end, we shall always... Um, Remember what God has done. That's another great lesson. When we listen, God enables us to accomplish. And later on, we must always remember what God has done. The problem we have is many times we forget what God has done for us. Now, may you remember the great things that God has done for you. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, the Bible says, this is what we quote every moment, that after... Samuel, then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizip and Shen and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, till now the Lord has helped us. He remembered what God had done for them. Now Ebenezer is about remembrance of what God has done. Now will you remember what God has done for you all the time? And I pray that remembrance becomes one of your landmarks, something that actually that God has done great things for you. So always we need to remember. Sometimes when we are in trouble, we forget. But remember that actually even that trouble, God is with you. And so may you uh, keep remembering, keep focus, keep focus on what God has done and so that you always remember to say praise the Lord. And then another thing very, very quickly is that God grants the prayers we present to him Israel demanded for the king, and God had, even when it was not going to praise to please God, but he granted it, and the repercussions, they felt them by themselves. And so God hears our prayer. Sometimes we ask for things, and then eventually become trouble for us, but he will grant us the desire of our heart. Paul in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, he says he will honor the desires of our heart. These people prayed in chapter 8, and they said, what a king, and God granted it to them. But eventually, even when it became trouble for them, but they had asked. So let us align ourselves, our will, with God's will. Pray the Lord. Align your will with God's will, and God will do the best for us. And then also, Samuel remained focused in everything that he was doing, even when he, other people were on the other side, but for him he remained focused. And may you remain focused, even when you're alone. Samuel was displeased with the decision, with the demand, but for him he kept obeying God even when everyone else disobeyed. So with you, my brother, my sister, remain obedient to God even when others, even when others have left, even when others disobey. For you remain focused and may God be with you and remain with you. So Samuel remained faithful to God in all capacities. 
this is what I'm closing with. The final lesson. As a boy, Samuel was faithful. As a young person, he was faithful. As a judge in Israel, he was faithful to God. Even when he was a prophet, even when he was a priest, even when he was a kingmaker in all capacities, he remained faithful. So friends, I also implore you to remain faithful, even when titles change. There are some people, when they are young, they are faithfully serving God, but when they grow, when titles change, when status changes, they also change. Samuel did not change, he remained faithful to God. And so this is very, very important to you and to me. And so friends, whether we are rich, whether we are young, whether you are old, whether you are what, remain faithful in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may God keep you. May God continue providing for us as we take these personalities, we learn something more from them. And so that God's name be praised even during our time that there will be something that we shall leave behind and people will say, yes, during so and so's time, something like this happened and may we leave a legacy. So whether young or old or remain faithful and may God will grant you the desire of your heart. Keep well and may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.